about what happened to my boyfriend and the father of my child, Brian. He was arrested uh, in the police action on Sunday. He can't speak for himself because he's concerned uh, about potentially losing his job, uh, especially with all the media here, which is unfortunate because all he did was uh, uh, an act of civil disobedience and trying to protect our freedom to assemble. Um, so he participated in the human chain, and um, when the chain was broken, um, he decided to put his body on top of the canopy that they were trying to remove. And um, when he did so, eight police officers all restrained him, despite the fact that he was just laying there, um, which I think is excessively forceful. He didn't resist uh, them in any way. He didn't assault them in any way. Um, and, uh, you know, from the videos, he, uh, there's a lot of talk about this. It, it wasn't that, it was a brutality, but when he explained to me that um, his head was between the full weight of a police officer and the concrete, and you imagine that, the cameras don't show it that well, but imagine that, the full weight of a police officer on one side of your head and the concrete on the other side of your head. No That's way. brutality. That's brutality. He came home, he came home from uh, the, he, he came home more sore, more hurt. He had injuries. He went to the doctor. Those injuries are documented. They put the uh, handcuffs on him so tight that they had to use a special tool rather than their regular clippers. They had to use a pair of dykes to get him off of him because his, hand, his handcuffs were so tight. Um, he had an abrasion on his forehead um, and he had multiple sprains and strains of, of his muscles that he still isn't recovered from. Um, the biggest thing that I want to share about Brian's experience though actually wasn't at the hands of the police but at the hands of the sheriffs. Um, when he was transferred to the uh, Presley Detention Center, um, he, uh, it, in the process of booking him, he had to um, he had to sign some paperwork. One uh, piece of paper was uh, a documentation. He said he was hurt to get a visual check or whatever. So it was just like documentation. I think of his injuries. It was um, just a basic statement about his basic information: his name, his birth date, and so forth. And so he was reading that, and of course. Being in custody, he wanted to read what the police put in front of him before he signed it. And this made the officers extremely unhappy. So he read the first piece of paper, he says, at a reasonable pace and signed it. And they were already starting to get irritated with him. He wanted to read the second piece of paper, which they claimed was exactly the same. But understandably, he didn't want to take their word for it. <laughs> his legal signature was going to be on it. So, uh, but they were screaming at him, just sign it, just sign it, he claimed. And um, so he, he read it a little bit more quickly, but confirmed to the best of his ability in the time they would allow him that it was the it was the same, and then he signed it. Then they put the third copy, and they said, it's the same, it's the same. And this time they were really yelling at him and really getting upset, and they wouldn't really let him read it, but he visually checked, and it looked about the same to him, so, they, so he signed it. The fourth piece of paper was different. And what he said happened was that this was uh, the piece of paper that said all of the stuff that they took from him, all of his personal possessions that they had to return to him. And this one, he obviously was particularly concerned with making sure it was correct because he didn't want any of his, any of his possessions to be uh, confiscated that, and not accounted for. And he was trying to read it, and he's an educated person and reads at a reasonable pace and he said that they didn't give him even, he only had a chance to read three or four of the items on the list before an officer twisted his arm behind his back, slammed his head on the counter, forcibly took oh his God. hand, took oh. his wrist, forcibly took his other hand, put it in the ink pad, and forcibly forged his authorization with his thumbprint. And he Even though he was physically injured, and as his, his domestic partner, I can attest to, to his physical discomfort and his injuries, he said that of all the things that he experienced on Sunday, the violation of his due process rights and him being stripped of his right to read what he signs by the sheriffs was the worst violation that he experienced. Um, they 
Shame. of police state. The police can't force you to authorize a document without your consent, without reading it. It's really illegal what they did. And, you know, they, the police, frankly, were behaving themselves because all those cameras were, were on them. And, and look what they did behind closed doors. So um, we have to remember that this, this march is definitely uh, started by the police brutality that happened to the to the occupiers uh, occupy Riverside on Sunday, but there are people who experience worse police brutality every day when the cameras aren't rolling. Yes. Since it's, there is mm -hmm. about Scott Olson. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I'll leave it to the person who's prepared to speak on it. And thank you guys for um, your attention, and um, I appreciate you being here to support Brian. We thank love you. Brian.